did you trade Jay Buhner for? <laughs> he had 30 home runs, over 100 RBIs last year. He's got a rocket for an arm. You don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> well, Buhner was a good prospect, no question about it. But my baseball people love Ken Phelps bat. They kept saying, Ken Phelps, Ken Phelps. One of the more famous Seinfeld episodes, and we're going to relive it with a couple of guys who are mentioned there, and one who did some uh, conversing. Joining us now here on the show, actor Jerry Stiller, who played Frank Costanza, Jay Buhner, formerly of the Mariners and Yankees, and Ken Phelps, who went back and forth in that deal with Jay Buhner. Guys, you got Jeff Nelson and Jody McDonald here. Appreciate you coming on board. How are you all today? I'm fine. Uh, Very yeah. well. <laughs> Yeah, hey, thanks for coming on. Ken, Ken, we'll start with you. Hey, I heard for, through the grapevine that you said nobody would even have known who you were if it wasn't for that episode. Oh, well, I'll tell you, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but who do you think was playing Steinbrenner? <laughs> <laughs> Larry David was playing Steinbrenner. He always, all you saw was the back of this uh, Steinbrenner's uh, head in, in all those episodes, and the voice was Larry David. And this was him again coming to the house, of course, uh, to offer his condolences. We thought uh, George had disappeared and, and was gone. And uh, I, I was uh, part of this whole Michigan. <laughs> and he guys played. It was a crazy time at that time, yes. You guys played it fantastically. Jay, um, it's several years down the road, and certainly uh, Mr. Costanza is being quite complimentary of your game. What did you think of it the first time you saw the episode? I loved it, man, because everybody's a Seinfeld uh, junkie. So to be mentioned on that show made me a household name, more so than uh, being a professional athlete, for sure. <laughs> and I know, I know Digger, Digger's a little pissed. He says, as long as I'm around still playing, that episode keeps going on. It keeps him famous. So sorry, Digger. Hey, yeah, thanks, Bone. Hey, uh, but, you know, I, I like to tell people, Bone, that I was better than you when I got traded to the Yankees. So, I mean, you got better afterwards. Uh, well, hey, hey, the Yankees true. were in a pennant race that year, man. You got to get rid of Buner and get Phelps. You guys were only, what, three and a half games back then. I'd sent Buner sh- shipped out to Seattle, too. <laughs> well, hey. especially, in De- especially in Detroit with the short ports, they're looking for a left handed hair could flip it into the seats. And I thought that's where I was headed, and uh, you know, as it turned out, they needed one more DH over there in New York. You know, you already had about three or four. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Phelps, Jay Buner, Jerry Stiller, all with us on the show. Jerry, um, why was it that Steinfeld was as sports related as it was? Was it Larry David? Was it Jerry Seinfeld? This was just one of many great sports uh, episodes that they had on Seinfeld. Who was the driving force that made Seinfeld as much about sports as it was? I tell you, I think from what I gathered uh, when I was off camera that uh, Larry David was not crazy about George Steinbrenner or any of the moves he made, but he wasn't crazy about (laughs) anything in those days. He was just evolving, you know, himself. But he he wasn't afraid to let out his uh, his, uh, his comedic uh, vent. Uh, on that show and a lot of other things. Uh, so uh, I, all I was doing was mouthing uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Davis stuff. At one point, uh, he had me in a trial when the, when poor George was being tried in, in, in uh, Upper Massachusetts there with all those people. He said, "Why did you say this?" Uh, Larry Davis said to me, "Why did you uh, pay play? Why did you pay Hideki Irabu twelve million dollars?" That was in the middle of a trial. He came out with Larry had those lines coming up out of his. There were many more lines that he had to uh, not put in the show because it would have looked like uh, uh, more of a. Of, 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 it was too heavy. Does that make any sense, Jerry? You know, uh, Jerry Seinfeld obviously looked like he was a Met fan, wearing a Met hat all the time. What about you, Yankee fan, Met fan? I, I really came from that period. I hate to you can, you can go back into so far back. I loved the Yankees when they were uh, when they were very uh, young, and they had people like DiMaggio, and they had Selkirk, and they had Lazari, and Frankie Posetti, and Red Wolf, and, and, and Murphy. And then I loved the Dodgers too. I was crazy about the the Brooks. I mean, when you had the Roy no- Newcomb and all, all those beautiful Joe Black was playing, and and Gil Hodges. I mean, I loved the, the, those two teams. The only people I didn't like were the New York. Giants. I did not like the New York Giants. And you have to remember, in those days when I was going to high school, we went to those games for nothing. They, 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 they took us in class, and we sat in the stadium, or we sat in the polo grounds. But the polo grounds was, was an empty space. It was like a morgue. And that Mel Ott, he was the only guy on the team who had a left field fence or was a right field fence that was 199 feet. And all he did was lift his left foot up when the pitch came in and whack it on him. But every year we lost. 
So my old, my my whole connection at the time was really with both those teams. Jay Buner, Ken Phelps, Jerry Stiller, all with us here on the show. Uh, Jay, as Nelly mentioned, you got traded from the Yankees, who were in the pennant race at the time, to Seattle, who wasn't really. Did you know that this was going to be a trade that was going to open doors for you? And as your boy Kenny Phelps said there, uh, said earlier, start the beginning of your career where you were going to become as good a player as you did? You know, to be honest with you, I read about it. Somebody read it to me. Uh, we were in Rochester. In tri- I was in AAA on that Columbus shuttle going up and down between the big leagues and the my- in AAA. And I read about it in a newspaper. So I had no clue what was going on. Then when I found out it was Seattle, I was like, oh, my gosh, of all, of all places to have to go from one side of the earth to the other side. And then, uh, you know, back then the Mariners were known as a very passive, um, you know, religious team and always getting their butts kicked. So I can't say that I was really thrilled about the whole deal, but I knew at the same time it was going to give me an opportunity to go play in the big leagues and get an everyday job. And that's, you know, when you're a young kid coming up, that's all you could ask for. Jay, you look back on it now. Obviously, you had a great career, and, and, and people know you all around the league. And Do you you look back at what the Yankees did while you were playing? Any, any kind of regrets or wonders, uh, what if I would have stayed there? No, because you know, Nelly, you can never say what if in this game, man. you got you got to take the opportunity to go get an everyday job and try to seize the opportunity to make the most of it. And, you know, uh, for me, it was an opportunity to go exactly do that. Um, and at the time, too, you know, the Yankees were known as being a, as a veteran team. Like Digger talked about, three DHs at the time. I mean, there was Jack Clark. It was, a, it was an older team. And so, man, I was as far down at the far end of the bench as I could get. I was never going to get any playing time. Uh, they were known as trading away their young guys to get uh, their prospects to get guys to come in for immediate help or rent a players, and uh, so it was a great chance for me. So, no, I don't look back at all. Ken, you mentioned earlier, and when you came over to the Yankees, another designated hitter, and the Yankees had a bunch of those when you got there, and specifically guys swinging from the left side. What did they tell you when you got to the clubhouse? What did your manager tell you he expected out of you and how you were going to fit under that Yankee squad? Well, like Jay was saying, it was a veteran ball club, and, uh, you know, really I think they, they kind of wanted to get me over there to keep Detroit from getting me. That was back in the days when, you know, you had to win the division outright, and uh, there wasn't a wild card. So, uh, you know, that was part of it. At least that's what I was hearing. And, you know, finding at-bats wasn't going to be easy. Uh, you know, you had Jack Clark over there. He wasn't too excited to see me show up. And, of course, Donnie Mattingly playing first base. And, uh, you know, I was looking around asking guys in the clubhouse, hey, what am I doing here? I mean, come on, you don't need another banger. I mean, you know, what am I going to do, come off of the bench and pinch hit for you? But, you know, it was uh, it was an interesting time. And, of course, uh, I-, I loved being there. It was, uh, it was just a great experience. And uh, playing in New York is something that you always cherish, you know. It's um, people you meet, uh, uh, just the things that happen in that city. I mean, Frank Howard said it best years ago my hitting coach, and uh, he said, you know, you're either eating filet mignon or you're starving in New York City, and I think that's really the truth. It's, uh, and, you know, they remember you when you win. They never forget that, um, and uh, they still recognize you. It's a great city. Whenever I'm back there, not that often, but when I'm back there, it's funny how people recognize you, but uh, that was an interesting time. Three managers in less than a year. I thought I was in Seattle again because it used to be that way there, but... Uh, <laughs> We had a ton of managers in a short period of time, Pinella and Bucky Dent and Dallas Green, you know, all of those in just that year and a month that I spent as a Yankee. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, it's just uh, the way the game is. I wore seven hats when I played, uh, 